Splunk DB Connect is the main integration between Splunk and traditional relational databases. It allows us to use lookup to enrich results from a database. It allows us to do an input to take the data from a database and put it into the Splunk indexes. And it also allows us to do an output. In other words, allows us to write into a relational database. In Splunk DB Connect 2.0, we added features around security, scalability, ease of use, and increase the back end support for additional databases. Once we log in into the uh, DB Connect UI, we can see a brand new UI compared to DB Connect 1. One thing that we notice right away is the concept, the new concept called identities, which is part of our new security features. We open the identities and we can create a new identity that ties the Splunk user to the relational database user. In this demo, I'm using a locally MySQL database. I also identify that user as the admin, and in this level, we can restrict the Splunk user to specific function within the database just by assigning different database roles. Also, what we can do on this level on the identities is we can give the user um, different permissions. For example, we have two main permissions. We have the DB Connect admin, which has about 20 different permissions, and we have the DB Connect user, which has only about eight permissions, for example, to just to connect to the database, but not modify the database connections and so on and so forth. So that's a new concept called the identities and the permissions that go with it. The UI also exposes us to a new way of connecting and creating connection to the database. In this case, as I mentioned, I have a local MySQL database that I'm connecting to, that I set up the connection to, and the very first thing that we pass to that connection is the database user. Using the identities, we tie the identity to the database connection. We also, from a secure point of view, we, could, we can enable an SSL connection and read-only connection to the relational database. And as was the case before, we can restrict the permission for that database connection to specific roles. So you can have identities with specific roles as well as database connection to specific roles. In addition, in the database types dropdown, we can see all the different options that DB Connect has given us, like connecting to DB2, MS SQL Server, Informix, Oracle, MySQL, and Teradata are a few of the options. Another subtype that we can see here is the query sub tab. The query sub tab allows us to go in and look at our database and see all the different tables that were exposed using that connection. And so we can either use a simple query where we can just select the database tables or we can go and be a little bit more granular and like look at the same thing with any open SQL that you wish to expose the data as. Once we have created identities and we created the connection to the database, we can go to the next part, which is the way to leverage the database. In here, underneath the operation subtab, we see three main functions. The very first one is the DB inputs. That's the function to pull data from a database and index it. To create a new DB input, just select the new input, give it a name, and preview it. 
once we validate that we have the right table, we can go into the main function, which is to set the parameters whenever we pull the data from the database to the Splunk indexer. We can either select the batch input, which will bring the entire content of that table, or we can select the rising column, which will bring us only the updated rows from a database. To do that, we need to specify a rising column, and we recommend for you to select the follow tail. Follow tail, make sure that Splunk will remember the last value that were brought from the database. We will then select the column that, go, that we're going to be used as the rising column. Let's select set. Once we set up the uh, rising column, the next part is to set up timestamp. Timestamp, we have two options. Either set up the current time based on the index time, the time that was that Splunk indexed the data, or based on the information in the relational database. So in this case, select choose column, specified the column that we want to use as the time. In this case, I'm going to use the higher date as the column for the date. We can specify what kind of format it's going to look in Splunk. And finally, we are just going to tell Splunk how often are we going to run this um, query. How often are we going to go in and bring the data from a database to Splunk and index it? The next part, we're just going to enter the metadata, source, source types, and index. For example, for the source, I'm just going to either select from existing one or just type the source. Pick it. Source type. Just pick it and an index. I can just pick one of the existing indexes. We can also set up the resource pool. Once you have set up the resource pool, you can then rely on Splunk to dispatch the job in a round robin manner to all the resource pool members. In this particular slide, I have three resource pool members. These are all Java processes that are running, and their job is to connect to the database and either use it for DB inputs, pulling data from a database to Splunk, or with the case of DB output, we can update the database using the resource pool members. In addition to DB inputs, we can also create a DB output using the new UI. This kind of capabilities allows us to go in and create a search that will write data to your relational database. As was the case before, we can give it the name, the connection, the identities that are going to be able to do such a thing, we at that point can select the Splunk fields so that we know using the UI we can just simply select which fields are we going to write to the database. We can then map the Splunk fields to the table columns so that you can do a regular insert or an update directly from specific fields in Splunk to the specific fields on the database. And finally, we can schedule the output. The third thing that the UI allows us to do is to create a lookup. A lookup is a way to enrich Splunk machine data with additional business contacts from the database. And so as was the case before, we can preview the data, we can select the specific fields that we want the data to be matched on. In this case, I have I want the postal code to be the column to match the data on. We then map the Splunk fields input as the postal code, and output will be the neighborhood that will come from the database. 
And once we finalize that, we can go in and look at the result in a Splunk query. The Splunk command lookup then calls the lookup I generated using DB Connect. The input part is the postal code that came from the machine data, and the output part is the neighborhood itself. And then once we have that, we can use that information in a regular Splunk search for additional business context. We in Splunk have a new command called dbx query. And the input to the dbx query is query equals, and at that point, it's a free form query that you can go against the database. And the information then can go into from a database to the search head and you can leverage that data directly. We also, in DB Connect 2, added a new health dashboard. The health dashboard tells us how many connections we made to a database, how many transaction we asked the database to do, and lots of information that we can leverage to make sure that the connection to a database is healthy and working as expected. To summarize, we added four main new features to DB Connect 2.0. First of all, on the security side, we enabled the use of SSL for many backend databases. We added the whole concept of identities to improve access control and the ability to control the permission on which Splunk user can see and do what functions in the database. Second of all, we added the whole set of features around scalability, like the resource pool that allows us to dispatch jobs to multiple DB Connect processes that will share the load around connecting to a database and bringing the database information to an indexer or updating the database. The third main feature is the ease of use where we added a new UI to make the configuration of DB input, DB output and lookup much easier as well as the health dashboard that makes sure that we can easily troubleshoot any issues. And finally, we increase the support for additional databases like Teradata and Informix. If you go to splunkbase.splunk.com and look for Splunk DB Connect 2, you can see the link to the documentations, the fact sheets, and a few additional resources. Thank you.